This is Westworld, a staple HBO series just like Game of Thrones or The Sopranos, and you would assume that it streams on Max, HBO's own streaming service, the literal company that created the series. And you'd be wrong about that because Westworld is not on HBO. It's not on any streaming service. When cable cutting became a thing, I was promised to have all this content in the same place. I was promised no ads and I was promised a fixed price and 4K video and every single one of those promises was broken. But this all relates to a core problem with streaming services. So what's the catch? <laughs> When Netflix first appeared, they were a DVD rental company because your modem internet of the 90s just couldn't support streaming. And, but then in 2009, it started offering streaming. And what Netflix basically told us was, join me. Ditch cable, join me instead. And we followed because Netflix in the 2010s was incredible. You still don't have Netflix? Yeah. Instantly. You watch Netflix on your PC. One in a prepaid envelope and Netflix automatically sends you another from your list. Choosing what to watch instead of having to sap through channels. I'm old enough to remember this. It, it brought so many TV shows and movies, HD, eventually 4K. You could share your password and nobody really cared. Even your ex had it. They even started making their own shows, all for $8 a month. At the time, Netflix was pretty much the only streaming service out there. And nobody really knew or understood if streaming was actually gonna catch on, if cable cutting was actually going to work. So the studios who owned the content had no problem leasing that content or licensing it to Netflix. They just figured, yeah, let Netflix experiment. Netflix used to host Star Wars and Harry Potter and Lost and The Lord of the Rings and Friends and The Office and Seinfeld, like all the stuff that people really love rewatching. It's stuff that you would pay a subscription to be able to watch any time. And this package was a no-brainer. So much so that it even reduced online piracy for a while. You have happy customers, you have a disruptive service, no competition, incredible user growth, more investor money to make this service even better, even create their own shows. And so Netflix, Netflix became a $314 billion company. But that package has been falling apart bit by bit, revealing the true couch with streaming services. The more services exist, the worse each one gets. As a studio, you just can't ignore a $314 billion company anymore. And why would you let anybody else profit from the content that you created, that you produced? Each studio started launching its own streaming service and it stopped licensing that content to Netflix. And suddenly this pile of movies became segregated. That also means that Netflix's user growth started to slow down. This means that investors no longer feel so bullish about the company. Less investor money means less money for these shows. This means being more strict about passwords. It means angry customers. And then that package is suddenly not a no brainer. You have all these options now and you have to pick, but that's just the beginning. The studios thought that competing with Netflix would be easy, but running your own streaming service is it's easier said than done. HBO had a hard time all along from a buggy HBO Go to a better HBO Now to this weird Max rebranding. Then Disney Plus, who already owns every movie that you can think of, doesn't have to license the movies from anyone, still hasn't been able to turn a profit. They don't pay screenwriters or actors well, they remove their own content to avoid paying royalties, and sometimes that reaches breaking points. Pay us what you owe us! We're fighting for integrity, respect, and, honor. and that's not the only problem, but for that, we need to go to my place. I, I'm a movie buff. And then when cord cutting became a possibility, I was sold in on this idea. So I ditched my Blu-ray player, I replaced it with a Lego, and this all backfired. This is Interstellar. This is one of my favorite films of all time. You see this here, right there? That's, that's color banding. You'll find it in the iTunes version, which I own. You'll find it in the Max version, which has an even lower bit rate. And this is because streaming all this data over the internet costs money. So they compress the content as much as they can. And that sometimes means a loss of image quality. Speaking of which, let's press F to pay respects to DVD special features. Like I remember when I bought these and each one of these films had, had two whole discs just dedicated to special features. They were amazing. Like I literally changed careers and decided to study production, be watching these things, but nobody buys this stuff anymore. So why bother making it? Streaming essentially killed special features. Well, now maybe I can settle down and enjoy this picture in peace. Okay, so going back to that package that we talked about, bit by bit, it's been falling apart. Stricter account sharing policies, ad supported plans, 
much higher price tags, less original content, fewer licensed movies. It's like being back to cable. It's, it's actually worse than cable. Here's the price average for cable services when I was growing up. Here it is inflation adjusted, and here's how much the average household spends on streaming services today. But not all is lost. There is a bit of a resurgence of physical media, at least for geeks who, like me, will need to buy Blu-ray players again. Some streaming companies have teamed up. They understand that you're not gonna pay for all these services separately. So Max was meant to consolidate HBO along with the Discovery Channel, and they're considering merging with Paramount Plus as well. All of these experiments are at the mercy of our pockets. Now, if you cancel just one of your streaming services, you could spend that money and buy a house instead. Truly, there are $1 houses in Italy. They have a catch too. You should check that video out. Catch you on the next one.